Hey, what's up, YouTube? Just another one of these short videos. I just wanted to go over one specific repair that I'm having to do to this 2004 Subaru Impreza Outback Sport. This is the wagon edition of the Impreza with the slightly lifted body and plastic trimming to mirror that of the Outback, but in smaller form. <clears throat> so this has got the EJ251, which is the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated single overhead cam. Uh, pretty generic engine that Subaru makes. And what I have been dealing with is, you saw one of my previous videos on this subject, a crank sprocket. It basically welded itself to the uh, crankshaft uh, from a bad shear key install from someone else. So it took some work to get this off. I had to cut this off with a crankshaft. In doing so, damaged part of the oil pump. So we're doing an oil pump replacement. Um, so let's just go over that real quick. That's pretty much all this video is about. So to get down to doing your oil pump for whatever reason you might be doing it, you know, lens, uh, there's going to be your timing components down there. So I've got a bunch of other videos about timing on Subarus. They're all basically the same with these single overhead um, 2.5 liters. So we got your passenger side cam uh, gear, your driver's side cam gear, and then normally you would have your crank sprocket sitting on your crankshaft. So that guy's going to be there. You have a time book going between. There's a bunch of uh, idlers and pulleys missing and stuff. Not going to go over disassembling the timing. I've done that and decent number of videos. As you can see, to make this install easier, I have removed the alternator and the power steering pump. Uh, there are plenty of other videos on how to get those out. They're pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the main things to uh, disconnect when doing this is the crank position sensor. So this guy right here goes right in this hole, 10 millimeter bolt. And I just tucked that out of the way. And then on the oil pump housing itself, it has seven of these 10 millimeter bolts. There's one there, there's one there, there's one down there, there's one there, there's another one down here. There's a center one right under the sprocket, and the last one is hiding right there. So that is all seven of the bolts you need to remove. Again, 10 millimeter. Um, to get the crank sprocket off, you know, it should just come right off. Shouldn't have to cut it off. You'll have a shear key pin or a woodruff key in your little slot here. You go to take this off. Don't lose that. You 100% need that. So you'll set your sprocket aside. We'll take those bolts out, take your sensor out, and this guy should come right off. If it doesn't come right off, get a rubber mallet. And you can kind of uh, tap on various places on it to loosen it up from the gasket maker used on it. Or you can just grab a pry bar. You can go at the back of the housing, pry it loose. You can come up on the back of the sensor here because it shouldn't take a lot of force to pop this loose. There's a bunch of various places you could pry this off with just to break that gasket seal. And then it should come right off. <clears throat> and it would have been nice if I did this video while it was off, but I've got pump over here, show you what it look like. Again, there's your one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, and seven bolt holes. Here's your position sensor. Here is your crank seal. You're gonna need a new one of those if you're doing an oil pump. <clears throat> Back of the oil pump looks like this. When you go to install the new oil pump, you're going to need to use a gasket maker, the oil resistant black kind, um, per the directions, and as is pretty typical, you're going to make a nice bead of gasket maker all the way around this housing and encircle all bolt holes as well. This right here is a lump of gasket maker. You need to seal this, and you need to seal this, and come all the way up around the housing. And you want between an eighth and a quarter inch bead, depending on how thick this area is. 
Um, if you are for some reason taking this off and reusing it, you need to clean all of this off. Use a flat razor blade, usually called a scraper or a widget. One of these makes it really easy. Don't gouge the metal. If anything, you can even, if you're cutting this stuff off, it's easier to go this way, but if you're just taking fine material off, you can run the blade backwards and just kind of scrape off the residue. Uh, this is the actual pump itself. It's got a uh, two square key, which means that there's a flat side right here and a flat side right here inside of a circle. Those two flat sides sit onto the crankshaft where um, instead of a bump out like this, it's a bump in. You know, these basically just slide onto each other. Easiest way you're going to have to install this, because this is one of the most obnoxious parts, is get your pump, slide it on the shaft, and I will say right now, do not install this seal before you put the pump on the crank. It will make your life harder. When you get this on there, you should be able to see this down in the hole, and you can kind of move it around. It's easiest to move it with a flathead screwdriver, and so you're going to look at your crank. <clears throat> and you're going to see about where that alignment is, and you're going to try and match that on this. Kind of put it in the position that looks about right. You're going to slide it on. Probably not going to get it perfect the first time, because it's really hard. And then you're going to go up there, and you're just going to move that a little bit. Try and put it on again, and a little bit more. And it still doesn't go on, then you're going to go the other way. And just kind of move this just a little bit, and try pushing it on until it slides right over it. And the whole housing should slide right on. There are two alignment dowels that go inside of here, and that one right there. Those align the pump so it doesn't get skewed. If you're reusing this, you need to inspect the pump clearances, taking out each of these screws. This is the actual pump. You need to take that out and check the clearance on the pump itself between its teeth to make sure that they are working correctly. And that's pretty much it. You'll get this on there from the gasket maker directions. You will finger tight this down until the gasket material oozes out around the sides. Let it sit for an hour to start curing. Come back, torque it down. Torque spec on this is 56 inch pounds. We come to our shop manual. Oil pump housing mounting bolts. 56 inch pounds or focus. Six newton meters. You notice this is inch pounds, not foot pounds. General conversion is 12 inch pounds per foot pound of torque. I will tell you right now, do not use a foot pound torque wrench. It will not go great. I ended up stripping out one of the bolts on it from over torquing it. So I had to go get a micrometer inch pound torque wrench. And I had to do a thread repair kit on the center left bolt. So I had this on and all sealed up and I had to take the whole thing off, drill this out, get a thread repair kit in there, clean up all the metal shavings, which I still have to clean up around the housing itself. I'm just waiting for this to cure and put all this back together. So general wait time on the cure is 24 hours. Now that I have that seated, as I just torqued it down, I cannot put oil or any other fluid that will come into contact with that gasket maker on it for 24 hours. I suggest you really adhere to these guidelines as well as don't just think you can tighten these and your hand torque measurement is good enough. That's tight, it's good. These need to be spec torqued. It's an oil pump. It's something you really don't want to risk a failure on. You want to make sure you've got a good seal between these mating faces. That's the other part. You know, if you're reusing the old pump, you had to clean up the back, but if you have a new one, you don't have to clean it up. But even if you're using a new one, you need to clean the face of the block. You need to go through with that flat razor blade and clean off all the mounting surfaces. And then um, I honestly suggest just a little bit of brake cleaner over those surfaces to get any residues to kind of just wash away. Go through and clean it with a shop towel or a microfiber cloth and make sure it is a dry, clean surface before you try and seat this on there. This is a decent bit of work to do and requires a lot of patience, especially since you had to take off the accessory belts, take off the crank pulley, take off the timing covers, disassemble the timing to make this even reasonably easy, take off the alternator, the power steering pump, uh, your sensor, and now you're getting the pump on and off. Uh, another suggestion is if you need even more working space, take out the radiator, drain out all the coolant, take the radiator out. It'll protect you from causing damage to the back of it. I have hit this probably twice now doing stuff. 
Um, I don't have any leaks yet, so that's good. But it is suggested if you need that clearance to take the radiator itself out. I already took the fans off. I suggest you do that too. There's really not enough room in here to do this with the fans on. You can kind of see there's a lot of metal shavings around here. A lot of metal work that I had to do to get this fixed. But there you go. Quick run through on oil pumps on the EJ25 engines. Specifically, this is the 251. This is widely applicable to the 251, the 252, the 253. Uh, there'll be some differences with the 253 with uh, single overhead cam phasing, but that's not really going to make a difference for doing the oil pump. I'm going to assume this is pretty broadly applicable to the two 2 liters, 2.2s in the regular Impresas in this generation. Um, if you have specific repairs, questions, concerns, you want to tell me how much you hate me or you love me, thumb up, thumb down that video, drop me a comment. I'm happy to uh, look into doing specific repairs walkthroughs for anybody that is looking for help you know stay strong do it yourself and uh save money oh my mechanic my specialty super mechanic was going to charge me 500 dollars just to get that uh, crank sprocket off took me about 45 minutes with a multi-tool it's an expensive expensive shop charge stay safe out there everybody thanks for watching